so i'm going to begin with uh, the basics of hyperbola in case you have forgotten it just a quick recap will do okay so just the basic concepts will recap of a hyperbola again hyperbola is basically defined as the locus of a point which moves in a plane in such a way that its distance from a fixed point which is the focus okay so i'll just quickly write it down so it's the locus of a point which moves in a plane which moves in a plane such that its distance from a fixed point which we normally call as the focus is e times its distance from a fixed line that's called the directrix and this e value is greater than 1 right so just to quickly sketch a uh, hyperbola in fact i'll try sketching it on the geogebra tool so that you have an exact idea of the shape of a hyperbola so i'll just sketch uh, x square by let's say a uh, 36 minus y square by 25 equal to 1. Okay, so uh, probably I've taken a bigger value. Let's say I take 9 over here, 9, and this is 4. All right, so this is the basically the diagram of a hyperbola. Okay, so focus of this conic c as you can see it is at point a and b and directrix of this conic c as you can see is this line f and g on your screen right so what i'll do now i'll just take a snapshot of this so that i don't have to sit and draw this every time right there yeah so let's go back so i don't need this line anymore so I'll just dump it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your hyperbola. Now, uh, the equation of this hyperbola, I will not derive it. We have already learned in our class 11. So x square by y square, x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1 is a standard form of a hyperbola where the foci, uh, where these foci, okay, so uh, let me name the foci as a and b. They are called the foci. The foci are taken as a e comma zero and minus a e comma zero. Okay, so these are the foci of the ellipse. Oh, sorry, hyperbola. Okay, uh, I'll actually write them down so that you can just read it from the graph. This is a e comma zero minus a e comma zero. Okay, and these two are called the vertices. Okay, the vertices is at a comma zero, and this is at minus a comma zero, and this is x equal to a by e, and this is x equal to minus a by e line. All right. Now, quick things about uh, the Hyperbola. So normally what you saw here was a hyperbola like this. Oh, sorry, uh, hyperbola like this. You could also have a hyperbola where the equation actually becomes this with a minus one over here. And this is called the conjugate of this hyperbola. Okay. So this is called the conjugate of the previous hyperbola. Okay. 
So just a comparison chart between them. So this pink border. Uh, graphically speaking, these two graphs would be like this, and this would be like this. So the orientation is different. Here, your x axis is basically containing the transverse axis. Okay, so this is your transverse axis, and this is called your conjugate axis. And here, this is your conjugate axis, and your y axis becomes the transverse axis. Y axis becomes the transverse axis. Okay. In both these situations, uh, this will be the center. Okay. So I'll, I'll just keep writing them now. So center for both of them would be 0, 0. That is something which you all know. Foci, uh, before foci, we'll talk about vertices. Vertices would be a comma zero minus a comma zero. Here it would be zero comma b and zero comma minus b. Eccentricity, eccentricity, one plus b square by a square under root. And in this case, it will be 1 plus a square by b square under root. In both of these cases, it's actually the length of eccentricity is given by under root of 1 plus the semi conjugate by semi transverse square. So this is a universal formula for eccentricity. So please keep this in mind. All right. Yeah. So uh, foci. Foci is at a e comma zero and minus a e comma zero. In this case, it is zero comma b and zero comma minus b. The equation of the directrices x equal to a by e and x equal to minus a by e. Here it is y is equal to b by e and y is equal to minus b by e. Length of transverse axis, length of transverse axis is 2a units. Here it is 2b units. And length of conjugate axis, here it is 2b units, and here it is 2a units. Okay. Length of the lattice rectum, length of the lattice rectum, again 2b squared by a units. And in this case, it will be 2a squared by b units. So just a quick recap. I mean, I knew you already knew this, but just in case it has slipped out of your mind. OK? Now, we'll talk a bit about the formation of an equation of a hyperbola given you know its directrix and focus and eccentricity. So we'll start with questions on the basic definition of a hyperbola. So let us begin with this question. Find the equation of the hyperbola. Find the equation of the hyperbola of the hyperbola whose directrix, whose directrix is 2x plus y equal to 1 whose focus is 1 comma 2 and whose eccentricity is root 3 whose eccentricity is root 3 <clears throat> if you're done please uh, type in your response in the chat box or you can message me on my whatsapp again we'll use the basic definition the distance from the focus should be e times the distance from the directrix 
So let's say the point is x comma y. Directly we can assume x comma y instead of wasting time taking h and k. So the distance from one comma two is e times the distance from the directrix. Okay. So let's take the root five on the other side and square both the sides. So we'll get five times x minus one square y minus two square plus three times two x plus y minus one the whole square. And if you open the brackets, you will be uh, getting five x square plus y square minus two x minus four y plus five is equal to three times. 4x square plus y square plus 1 plus 4xy minus 2y minus 4x. Okay. And simplifying it will give you 7x square minus 2y square uh, plus 12xy. And then we'll have plus uh, 14y. And we'll have a minus of uh, 12 and 10, which is minus 2x. And 25 minus 3 is minus 22. Is equal to. So this is the desired equation of the of the hyperbola. Is that fine, guys? Now we'll quickly take up some question on the general form general form of a hyperbola when i say general form of a hyperbola means its uh, origin is no longer at sorry its center is no longer at origin so it is of this nature so these cases are called this or this So these cases are called the general form where the center of the hyperbola is not at the origin. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll start off with a question. Okay. <clears throat> Directly asking you some of the critical points. Okay. So in, in this case, the center is at plus minus alpha comma plus minus beta. Okay. However, the transverse axis and the conjugate axis are still parallel to the x and the y axis respectively. So let's take a question on this. Find number one, center. Number two, uh, vertices. Number three, eccentricity. Number four, uh, let's say four psi. Number five, let's say equation of the directrices. So find these parameters for seven y square minus nine x square plus 54x minus 28y minus 116 equal to 0. So guys, please start solving it. And this time I want you to give your responses because I can see no response coming from any one of you. All of you are like mute spectators. All right, guys. Uh, so finding the center, there are a lot of methods. Uh, one of the method is the partial derivative method. So let's say I call this term as S. Okay. You can find out the center of any uh, uh, conic section by solving these two equations simultaneously. Solving these two equations simultaneously. Do S by do X equal to zero and do S by do Y equal to zero. If you solve these two simultaneously, you may get the you will get the uh, get the coordinates of the center okay so i'll try this method as of now so partial derivative of this with respect to x if you do we get minus 18x plus 54 equal to 0 that means 
x is equal to 3. If you do a partial derivative with y, you get 14y minus 28 equal to 0, which means y is equal to 2. So you can say 3 comma 2 is the center of this particular conic. Right? So the use of this partial derivative can be to find out the center only, not for any other thing. So if I try to solve it by our regular method, the method that we have learned in our class 11th, right? So we need to complete the squares. So first we need to group up terms having y. So let's say I group up these two terms. Then I group up terms having x. Okay. And now we are trying to uh, complete the square over here. So it becomes 7 y square minus 4 y. X square minus 6 x minus 1 1 6 equal to 0. So let's complete the perfect square. This will be y minus 2 the whole square. Uh, this will be 9 x minus 3 the whole square. And you have to compensate by adding 28 and minus 81 on the other side. So you get 7y minus 2 the whole square minus 9x minus 3 the whole square is equal to 63. That gives you y minus this by 9 minus x minus 3 square by 7 equal to 1. In other words, you can write down the equation of the, this hyperbola as x minus 3 square by 7 minus y minus 2 square by 9 equal to minus of 1. Now, if you want to get the center, please note that the center of the hyperbola, let's try to do a role change over here. Let's try to do a role change over here. Let's compare this with Let's compare this equation with, let's compare this with x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to minus 1. So it's obvious that x is now, the role of x, capital X is now being played by small x minus 3. Role of capital Y is now being played by small y minus 2. Your a square is 7 and your b square is 9. That means a is root 7 and b is 3. Okay. Now we are trying to find the center. For center, we know x is 0, y is 0. That means x minus 3 is 0, y minus 2 is 0, which means x is 3, y is 2. So 3 comma 2 is your center. Okay. The next question was vertices. The next question was the vertices. So vertices in this case is 0 comma b and 0 comma minus b. But instead of writing it like 0 comma b and 0 comma minus b, I would suggest write it like x is 0, y is b. That means x minus 3 is 0, y minus 2 is b. b is going to be 3. Right? So 3 comma 5 is one of the vertices. The other vertex, the other vertex is at x equal to 0 and y equal to minus b. That means again x will be 3 and y minus 2 is minus 3, which means y is minus 1. So 3 comma minus 1 is the other vertex. Next is uh, the focus. Sorry, uh, the eccentricity. Eccentricity in this case will be under root of 1 plus a square by b square. So which is 1 plus 7 by 9. That's going to be 4 by 3. So eccentricity uh, is going to be 4 by 3. Right? Next is focus. We know that for focus or foresight, in this case, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to plus minus be. So I'll take these two cases, x equal to 0, y equal to b. So x minus 3 is 0 and y minus, let me write plus minus directly, y minus 2 is equal to plus minus be. So that gives you 3 
as x and y could be y minus y could be a uh, 2 plus minus 4 so y could be either 6 or y could be minus 2 so 3 comma 6 and 3 comma minus 2 oh sorry uh, 3 comma 6 and uh, Uh, yeah that's fine three comma six and three comma minus two okay now directrices so the equation of the directrices would be y is equal to plus minus b by a. okay so y in this case is y minus 2 is equal to plus minus b by e. So that will be this. So y is equal to 2 plus minus 9 by 4. So your y could be 17 by 4 or your y could be minus of 1 by 4. Okay. So this basically helps you to understand the initial concepts that you had learned in your class 11th. 